Illegal Starlink terminals from the American company SpaceX are contributing to Russia's advance on the battlefield in Ukraine, particularly during the seizure of Volodar Donetsk Oblast. The Washington Post reported this with reference to the Ukrainian military. According to the Washington Post, the Ukrainian army used to have a significant advantage over the numerically superior and better armed Russians in terms of internet connection via Starlink terminals, but the Russians now use it as well. Starlink's illegal terminals let Russians use satellite internet to increase coordination during assaults, launch more drone sorties, and strike Ukrainian troops with precise artillery attacks. A prohibition on the sale of American electronics to Moscow includes Starlink terminals, which allow commanders to monitor the battlefield in real time using drones and provide secure communication between military units. According to the Ukrainian military, there is a booming illicit market for selling Starlink terminals to Russian soldiers on the front lines, and their proliferation has played a significant role in Russia's recent successes. Six Ukrainian soldiers and officers from separate units in Donetsk Oblast told the Washington Post that Russia has closed the technology gap, making its forces more cohesive and increasing the frequency and accuracy of attacks. An officer from the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, which had been defending the Volodar area since 2022 and was recently forced to retreat, highlighted Russia's deployment of the Starlink system as well as a lack of troops and weapons as contributing factors to Volodar's surrender. According to the Washington Post, Starlink terminals appeared on Russian positions throughout the year, but their impact has expanded significantly in recent months as Russian offensive forces utilize them to coordinate attacks. Ukrainian military operation reconnaissance drones near Novohrodivka reported seeing Starlink equipment in Russian positions beginning last month. The Pentagon has previously indicated that the US and Ukrainian governments are cooperating with SpaceX to prevent Russia's illicit use of Starlink terminals in occupied Ukraine. SpaceX stated that terminals are deactivated when utilized by a sanctioned or unauthorized party. The Pentagon and SpaceX declined to provide specifics about the US operations, such as how many illegal terminals used by Russian soldiers have been taken offline. Although Russian organizers and individuals are not permitted to sell Starlink, a grey market has emerged fueled by strong demand from military and private purchasers. The Washington Post examined four of the many Russian websites allowing direct sales for the special military operation as the Kremlin refers to the war against Ukraine. The majority of terminals are sold through Telegram and start in Moscow Oblast before moving on to the front line. To activate the device, customers may supply a foreign phone number, email address and bank account to pay a monthly subscription charge, pushing suppliers to seek out people ready to lend their personal information. Fighter jets took off from Shinshu Air Base, Taiwan, after China held large-scale military exercises surrounding Taiwan and its outlying islands Monday. China deployed an aircraft carrier along with warplanes, in a move that underscores the tense situation in the Taiwan Strait. China's defense ministry said the drills were a response to the Taiwanese president's refusal to concede to Beijing's demands that self-ruled Taiwan acknowledge itself as a part of the People's Republic of China under the rule of the Communist Party. The drills came four days after Taiwan celebrated the founding of its government on its national day, during which Taiwan's President Lai ching te said in a speech that China has no right to represent Taiwan and declared his commitment to resist annexation or encroachment. The presidential office of Taiwan called on China to cease military provocations that undermine regional peace and stability and stop threatening Taiwan's democracy and freedom. A map aired on China's state broadcaster CCTV showed six large blocks encircling Taiwan indicating where the military drills are being held, along with circles drawn around Taiwan's outlying islands. China's defense ministry has not said how long the drills will last. China deployed its Liaoning aircraft carrier for the drills, and CCTV showed a J-15 fighter jet taking off from the decks of the carrier, though the exact location of the carrier is unclear. The PLA's Eastern Theater Command spokesperson Navy Senior Captain Li Shi said the Navy, Army Air Force, Missile Corps were all mobilized for the drills, as it was an integrated operation. This is a major warning to those who back Taiwan independence and a signifier of our determination to safeguard our national sovereignty," Li said in a statement on the service's public media channel. 
Taiwan's defense ministry said it had deployed its warships to designated spots in the ocean where they'd carry out surveillance and stand at ready. It also deployed its mobile missile and radar groups on land to track the vessels at sea. As of Monday morning, they had tracked 25 Chinese warplanes and seven warships and four Chinese government ships, though it did not specify what types of ships they were. China held similar large-scale exercises after Lai was inaugurated in May. Lai continues the eight-year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party that rejects China's demand that it recognize Taiwan is a part of China. Also on Monday, China's Taiwan Affairs Office announced it was sanctioning two Taiwanese individuals, Puma Shen and Robert Cao, for their work in promoting Taiwan independence. Shen is the co-founder of the Kuma Academy, a non-profit that trains civilians on wartime readiness. Cao donated $32.8 million to fund the academy's training courses. Shen and Cao are forbidden to travel to China, including Hong Kong.